Okay, hello viewers. Welcome back to another episode in the Explorica Motorsport Engineering Series. Uh, my name is Saidat. I'm a race engineer for uh, a simulation racing company, and I'm also the motorsport content developer for Skillshark Edutech. Um, I'll just give a small introduction about our company. Once again, Skillshark Edutech is an academically motivated startup uh, focusing on imparting 21st century skills in the youth of today. Uh, what makes us unique is our approach and motive to impart these skills. Um, so we're currently, you know, actively trying to optimize and tailor courses and webinar experiences for niche subjects, an example of which is today it's motorsport engineering, uh, which may not otherwise be easily accessible uh, due to multiple factors. Um, now we're focusing on actively developing educational modules and specific uh, you know, for specific real world applications. Uh, and right now India is facing a major, you know, skill gap and this issue has been accelerated due to COVID-19. So we're trying to do everything we can to motivate you and get some information to you guys, especially for all your graduates who are, you know, looking to start your careers uh, shortly. So that's kind of a little bit about us. Uh, we have this, we're doing this uh, motorsport engineering uh, Explorica series in collaboration with Rep Mechanics. So we'd like to thank them to think, thank them for also being involved today. Um, so what are we going to focus on today? Well, let me give you a bit of insight to this. Uh, it's been historically, I mean, in history has stated, and it's, we've seen that five women have been a part of Formula One races in the past. Uh, a notable example is Leila Lombardi, who was the first ever lady to score a point in Formula One. Uh, now having been a male dominated sport for a very long time, the entire industry is gradually and positively, you know, shifting to a gender neutral environment. And we can see this in the recent years in Formula Two and Formula Three. Um, we've also had, uh, you know, examples of uh, drivers like Susie Wolf, Carmen Jorda, and uh, the late Maria de Velota, who have been test drivers in the past. Um, so now let's look at this from another perspective. Uh, the last Indian to have been on a Formula One grid was back in 2012. So that's nearly eight years since we've seen that. Um, now we have a contender, an Indian who's en route to represent both these domains in one entire package in the near future. So today our guest is India's youngest female Formula Four racer uh, and was one of the Indian drivers to attend the W Series selection camp in Austria last year. So I'd like to welcome Meera Erda for today's webcast. Thank you, Meera, for joining us and taking very your valuable time to be a part of this um, series. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And could we start with a small introduction from your end and maybe take us back one decade to where your career started in cards? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I'm really glad that I can help you guys or the viewers in some or the other way. So talking about myself, I started racing when I was nine years old uh, back in 2010. And it was all because uh, in 2009, uh, my dad started a go-karting track in Vadodara where I stay right now. And uh, I was just there having fun with my brothers, like, you know, Ever since I was a kid, I used to love the fact, you know, I used to love speed and I used to love uh, driving and, uh, you know, hanging out with my dad when he goes out riding uh, Royal Enfield or going on a long drive. So when he started the go-karting track, I just really enjoyed the fact that I could go to the track anytime and just drive a go-kart. And uh, with my brothers, I get, started getting better. And when I turned nine, uh, my dad asked me if I wanted to get into professional racing. And uh, at that time, I was just nine. I mean, what, you know, like what knowledge would I have about motorsports? Uh, but I was really happy with the fact that I could go out there, like in the whole country, travel, go on, go to different race tracks and, you know, meet new people. And most importantly, avoid going to schools. Uh, so that was something that really, you know, uh, made me take up that. And I went to see one of the races in Pune. Uh, it was the national go-karting championship. Um, and that's when I saw that, you know, uh, there are no female racers. And I mean, back then I had no knowledge that it's a male dominated sport. So I asked my dad if like, you know, if, like every different car, uh, sport, we have like, you know, different categories for males and females. And he was like, no, there's nothing like that in most sports. If you're racing, uh, you will be racing with the guys. So uh, that is something that really encouraged me. And after that, I got professionally trained and uh, in just like two weeks. And I guess around, I, I would say two weeks of training and another few days of practice uh maximum 25 days and i was in my first ever national racing championship in hyderabad in 2010 so that's how my journey started 
that's i mean that's incredible you see a lot of examples from the past of many drivers in racing not just formula 1 but any racing series most of them obviously start with either cards or mini electric bikes based on whether it's a four wheeler or two wheeler and you see them start off at a very young age practice a lot and then get into championships at around the age of 7 so for you to have done that in a matter of 2 to 3 weeks and then to represent the country and actually make a really positive impact in your first ever racing series that's something really cool um and i read that you also got the chance to go to malaysia the same year for uh, the the yeah. same for an international event yeah uh, so the team that i was uh, driving for uh, they used to call uh, mechanics from malaysia um and that's when you know they saw my driving and they're like you know what you should try uh, coming to malaysia and practice a little train with us and maybe if you're interested we, you can do a few international races as well uh, so me and few of my teammates actually went to malaysia to just practice and get trained with the team and that uh, i i was really interested by then that you know i was driving really well trying to learn from everybody so uh, we decided that okay well, let's let's do one international race and see how that goes and after that my journey just started uh, it was like one week i'm in india racing one with one week i'm in international racing so yeah uh, it has been a great journey that i could uh, you know represent my country at asia level as well um, i have raced in malaysia thailand for 6 years so uh, yeah i'm i'm really glad i could get that national international level experience because compared to india the experience at even asia level is way tougher and you get to learn so much uh, there are like what uh, i guess more than 30 people on the same grid uh, and that's also in go karts uh, so it was, it used to be like a lot of fun and uh, i even got few podiums over there so yeah as go so is this one of the okay so this is a photo that we see here is part of the formula for uh, southeast asia yes, series that's that's, that's yeah. what you're currently uh, uh, racing in correct uh, i raced i did three rounds uh, in the uh, formula 4 southeast asia championship last year okay yeah so so that would have been a crazy experience right i mean to have shifted yeah, from yeah. go karts to a four wheeler i mean over, over i mean like an open wheel car over the span of like 9 years uh, you know when i look at your story it reminds me a lot about uh, it reminds me of a chapter that i read in lewis hamilton's autobiography that he wrote i believe at the end of 2007 after finishing his first um, season in f1 and one of the chapters is about how he started and he actually started as a kid or perhaps like 3 or 4 years old and he would race yeah. oh, he would race rc cars with adults at uh, professional rc racing circuits those are obviously uh, petrol powered cars and um, that's kind of very similar to what you did right like when you shifted from a go kart to open wheel cars um the formula for lgb series that uh, i believe was conducted by Ro- the roll on uh, roll on chain company um uh, did uh, that yeah. it was from jk tires when i started uh, okay it was yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was around two thousand twelve. Correct. Somewhere around that time. I started. I started uh, in two thousand fourteen in the Formula cars, and JK Tire used to organize the championship. Right. So how? What was that like? I I I've seen a few of your videos in the past where you were told you were racing with people that were on average about thirty to forty years old at that time. So for someone who's around the age of ten to go there and actually compete with them, what was the experience like? What, what did it? You know, what did you have to do physically and mentally to prepare yourself for these cars? Uh, so after dry, so I usually believe that you know taking one step at a time is very important. I didn't want to rush into a higher category where I couldn't perform well and then you know get disappointed. So I actually did quite a few years in go karting, uh, I guess seven years. And when I turned fourteen, actually, uh, so that time the minimum age to get into formula cars was fourteen. Uh, so as soon as I turned fourteen, I did one race, uh, in the, and it was amazing. It was obviously quite a huge difference uh, coming from a go kart to formula cars. Uh, I had to like do a lot of training programs. Uh, I guess uh, I had to do two training programs and one uh, one of them was driving in the rains and everything so it was quite difficult and at that point of time 
I was winning uh, in the formula in the road tax in the go karts, and uh, when I shifted into formula cars, I was somewhere behind, like in the last. And that mental pressure was quite a lot at that time because I used to expect a lot of myself that you know I'll be up there at the mark because uh, I I used to do well in go karts. But uh, when I knew that you know I'm driving and racing com- against like national champions who have been racing in the same category for like years now, uh, I had to like settle down for being in the back and try to learn. I gave myself two years to just try and understand the whole car, try and improve, come up to the level, uh, you know, compared to the other uh, championship winners. And in 2016. Uh, I became the national rookie champion. That was a big, you know, opening for me. Uh, that gave me a lot of confidence in my driving as well because, um, you know, we used to fight really close, um, and you know, getting that experience has really helped me as a driver uh, when I'm on the race tracks because I could manage that whole stress of driving with national champions who know the car inside out. and i was just starting off in that so yeah i think uh, it is one of the biggest highlights of my career correct right, yeah so the go karts obviously being slightly underpowered those are more of you know vehicles where you need to use your weight physically and yeah. turn the car whereas when you get to these open wheel you know bigger open wheel vehicles it's a lot about torque steering and using your throttle itself to rotate the car um so yeah. what what changes did you have to actually make to your driving style to adapt to these because we have seen so many stories of different racers all you know like you said they were you know beating people in karts in the first time they're in the open wheel cars it takes time to kind of get used to it yes. uh, so one question is how did you change your driving style to suit that and also how were the driver how was the competitor mentality uh, I mean, what was the driving style that they used obviously in karts it's more of wheel to wheel and you know you're always trying you can actually make contact because you just need to find those gaps when it comes to open wheel it's a lot more risky any lateral collision can destroy the suspension so what is exactly. the what is the change in your competitors as well did you see a bit more of maturity in their styles in driving of course of course uh, i could see a huge change uh, when i shifted to formula cars so in go karts i was a very calm person uh, you know i was like in my zone uh, i knew what the car was and i knew how to handle situations uh, but when i shifted to formula cars uh, you know being really smooth didn't really helped my driving style at that time i had to get on the aggressive side and like you know push my limits i had to learn how to lay it brake and still control the car at such high speeds and it was not like that in go karts i mean you know the car is under your control but over here just like a uh, i mean if you just break a little bit later you might spin and there is so much risk because there are other comp- drivers coming behind you on a main straight with the speed of 180 km per hour and uh we have had so many you know accidents luckily i wasn't a part of it but i have seen so many accidents happen in front of me we had to take like really quick decisions because there are sometimes that you know tires are flying in front of us there's mud we don't know what's happening uh, there's a lot of uh, you know uh, broken parts on the track uh, while we are racing and something happens so you know getting that aggression in me was really important at that point of time and uh, you know being that being that alert uh, while i'm on the race track was really important and uh, compared to that uh, obviously we saw a lot of you know maturity in the drivers uh, we know that you know what is our limit to you know compete against each other how much we can push further and uh, how close we can get to each other while we are you know uh, competing for the position so there was a lot more matureness that we i could see and uh, it really really you know helped me calm, you know bring that balance between my aggression and my calmness um so i i am now able to you know manage that you know when i need to be calm and when i need to wait patiently to overtake uh, i can do it but at the same time when i know that i have to just go for it i can manage that at the same time so yeah absolutely i mean uh, i think uh, 50% of racing is calculation and waiting for the right sure. chance grabbing the points you have instead of potentially throwing away your pos- 
current position and not very finishing true, with anything. I think a classic example that I can think of or a driver that used that technique the most was probably Alain Prost. I heard a lot about how he just stuck to the position he had and grabbed the points he had. That made him the professor of motorsport back then. Um, anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked there. But uh, yeah, you're talking about calculation. But I think the most exciting part of any Grand Prix, at least for a viewer who's particularly new to motorsport is the race start when you have you know a grid of anything up to 10 to 20 cars lined up driving their engines matching the rev limiter and just launching with with their clutch yeah. um so that that's really exciting so do cars generally uh you know you do a formation lap and obviously you warm up your tires you gear up the car to get a solid getaway um it'd be amazing to hear your perspective of the entire race start perhaps from the point you take the car out from your pits and line up to the grid up till maybe the end of lap one um so it'd be nice to hear maybe an entire routine of that um also one more thing would you prefer getting a really good start and then control the pace with the racers behind or would you rather hold back have a very conservative start and then have the advantage of pressurizing your drivers uh pressurizing your rivals throughout the race and make them burn out their tires and so it's a I'll lot of stuff yeah, second, yeah yeah i'll go yeah. with the second question first uh yeah. which is I love starting from the back of the grid. Uh, and that has that this is the, uh, you know, one thing that has really helped me uh, get the confidence because, okay, going back to why I love uh, starting at the back of the grid is uh, I won my first ever race in my career after starting last in, the, in, in that race. And that was in go-karts. I started last and in just three laps, I actually overtook everybody and I won that race. So um, why I love it? Because I have nothing to lose. Uh, I can just overtake continuously. I can, you know, pressurize the guy in front of me and overtake him when the right point, when, when it's the right point. Whereas when I start in the beginning, when I start in the front, it's a lot of pressure um, because you never know what might happen. Somebody might take your slipstream and overtake you. You know, few cars at the same time can overtake you. You might lose a lot of positions. So I think it's better for me that even if I start in the mid pack or even in the second row, I'll be much more happier than to start at the first, uh, you know, in the first row. And coming back to the how, you know, how racers actually feel while we are racing, uh, you know, before the race start. I am a very calm person uh, right before my race because I, I totally visualize the whole race in my mind. I totally visualize, you know, what all I'll be doing, uh, how I'm going to attack. Uh, depend, everything depends on the position that I am in currently. And um, after that, it's just, you know, being really alert with what you're doing. Um, I don't really plan a lot uh, for the race starts because uh, it, it's just out of the con it's just out of our control. We don't know what the other driver is gonna do, or if we don't know what's gonna happen in the race start. So. Uh, it's all about just going into that moment and, you know, dealing with everything that comes to you. And uh, I really love the fact that when I start at the back, uh, you know, I can overtake as much as I can uh, in the race starts. So, yeah, that is what I feel during the race starts. But at the same time, I totally forget everything else that is going around in the track or, you know, outside when my team mechanics or my parents are giving me instructions, uh, showing the boards, lap boards. It's just, you know, I, I can't see anything else. We are just focused on how we can get that position. And um, at the same time, we as a team as well have our plans that, you know, whom we have to let go, whom we have to, you know, like compete with, whom we have to help. So, yeah. Right. So it's a lot of non-verbal communication in terms of reading, yeah. not really reading the room, but reading the track as you go on. Um, you said you, you told about uh, show, obviously showing those uh, the boards with your lap times from the pit wall. Uh, do you have radio contact in these uh, these races or it's non-verbal? Okay. No, no. It's just the lap boards. That's all. Lap boards. Right. Um, and most of the races that you uh, did, particularly, let's start with maybe the Formula 4 uh, LGB series. Um, did you have, um, you know, do, were they just short sprint races or did you actually have strategies and stints, pit stops and things like that? No, no, we don't have like pit stops in these races. Uh, it's just, I guess, uh, max 15 laps 
that's that's like the um, so we have like a certain uh, a track limit and track time that we have to cover on uh, around 100 uh, one uh, 30 minutes so yeah that's yeah that's all so it's like a sprint race sprint race right so that means obviously you don't have that freedom to be very uh, liberal with your usage of fuel and tires so you need to actually uh, calculate your you know how do you how do you like do you have some sort of an indicator that shows your fuel amount or how do you calculate how much you have and how do you know how to control the pace to reduce your fuel usage basically without well, any centers that's that's like you know we don't even focus on that uh, in the cars that we drive because we know that the mechanics have done their job they have calculated everything so in this cars it's just like a matter of 30 minutes maximum uh, calculating the uh, formation lap safety cars if there's there are any so it's not a long period of time that you know we have we really have to think about management of fuel and everything and in the lgv cars i think uh, you know the tire compass and everything is like really you know different from the formula cars so we don't really have to think about all of that in this cars but when we race internationally and in you know bigger cars that's when all the strategy and all the calculation comes in that's right uh, so we'll we'll get to the strategy and engineering aspects after the next question so i thought we'll go through a few tracks that you've driven on uh particularly i'll start with the indian tracks um that's where every racer from india you know starts off they get familiar with all three of the major tracks so it's it's a really crazy combination because we have the Buddha international circuit which is an fia grade one circuit of course and it's hosted three gps in the past for formula one so that circuit has you know major elevation changes high energy long right hander especially the one uh I believe uh, in, in sector Parabolic three, the car. long, yeah, yeah the, yeah, the yeah. long, uh, almost three quarters the of a circle. Car, yes. The yeah. parabolic car. Um, and then you have the MMRT raceway, which is uh, a grade two and is a, basically a flat, dusty circuit, high speed S's, high speed corners. And then you have a really peculiar and personally one of my favorites, which is Kari, um, particularly because of the sort of elevation changes. That's where Formula LGB kind of all started in India. You know, it's yes. kind of the home for that. So how do you gear up to kind of, I know it's still a small selection of tracks. It's not an entire F1 calendar, but still three different tracks, three very different types of driving styles that you need to use. How do you mentally prepare for that? Do you go through track notes? Maybe we'll start with that. We'll add some more to this question as we go through. Yes. Uh, so I would say, you know, I could finally drive on all three circuits together in one year last year in 2019 before that i have never been to uh you know mmrt that like last year was my first ever time that i actually went there and drove on that track but my personal favorite has always been um Coimbatore, the kari motor speedway because i have raced on that track ever since i was nine years old and i would race on that track like in one year at least thrice uh so I know the I know the track like inside out and um, it's a very narrow track I would say and there are a lot of uh, you know we don't get like a lot of uh, overtaking opportunities only few of them and compared to that if I see BIC uh, it's a long track uh, you get a lot of once you're like you know out of the pack you can't get back to it uh, because you know it's all about having this stream. If your car is powerful, I'm, I'm sure you can catch up uh, to the front pack. Uh, but yeah, once you're out of it, you it's it's very difficult to you know cope up with everything. Um, also, very you know really good opportunities for overtaking on BIC is the main straights and the back straight. Uh, and compared to that, MM, MMRT is is something that I'm still trying to learn because it's very fast and you really need to control the car over there and uh you know like the fast corners and everything it's quite difficult it's a very technical track for sure um i'm still you know like we i still have a lot more to learn on that track so yeah i'm really looking forward but every time before i go for the races we have like a track walk uh with the team sometimes or just personally i go to the track have a track walk we have our, our track layouts ready so even before i go for the race uh, I, at my home i have like the, the track layouts you know uh, stuck on the wall and i, I actually memorize the whole thing 
uh, trying to you know remember the lines and what all I can change this time. So yeah, there's a lot of thinking that we do before the races. But once we are on the track, it's just like it feels like home, and we know what all things are gonna happen. So yeah, I like that phrase, technical track for MMRT, and it's it's okay. pretty much that because it is obviously sanctioned by the FIA and the FIM. So it's a track that can host. Yeah open wheel cars you we've seen you know the volkswagen series running there for so many years um and it also has bikes so to, to put all of that into one track package is obviously really impressive so i, I would i would expect it to be nothing short of technical uh, let's go back to kari which is of course like you said your favorite track as well uh, can you run us through that first corner because Personally speaking, um, I had the opportunity to drive the Formula student car that I was, the team that I was part of, I did an endurance run there. And that particular corner, in fact, in Formula student, we kind of run the track in the opposite direction. Obviously not the entire track, but the camber change on that track, on that part of the track where it dips. So from both ends, it kind of it dips and then goes through a sort of bank turn. I found it really slippery with the relatively underpowered car that we have. So how do you cope with that as you enter that corner? Can you run us through maybe the entire sequence from main straight through that corner to the exit? Uh, that is one of my favorite corners. So I have made a lot of overtakes over there because obviously I get the slipstream and uh, over the years I have, you know, finally, like finally managed to get the right line. Uh, it, it's, it's all about, you know, uh, finding that correct point of braking. So, like, you know, when we go for track walks, we actually discuss where the drivers are, you know, everybody has a different driving point, uh, breaking point on that uh, main straight. And there are so many drivers who actually break so late. And I'm like, I mean, how do you guys even manage that? And it is all about, you know, having that control over the car. And um, I, I have tried so many times and finally, you know, I have learned that technique of breaking late and, you know, turning um, and taking the corner properly and just, you know, going up at the bank and then coming down. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a very nice uh, corner, I would say. Great uh, overtaking opportunities. I have overtaken a lot of guys uh, taking the inner line, where, which is like, uh, you know, a lower part of the track. And yeah, it's, it's one of the favorite uh, corners for me. Absolutely. And uh, I, I would assume you obviously the braking technique that you're talking about, the trail braking, you combine that yes, with your gear yes. shifts to make sure you control the car there. Um, let's get to some of the handling characteristics of uh, the various cars and well, let's include the go-karts as well, because it's a good selection okay. of different vehicles that you've driven. Um, how does the handling of your go-kart compare to the Formula uh, LGB car and compare that to the uh, Formula 4 Southeast Asia Championship car? Oh, uh, okay. So the go-karts, it's basically, you know, it's, I, I would say, one of the most fun part driving a go-kart on that track uh, or even at any track, uh, you have that full control and you're like so close to the ground. Uh, you're climbing the curbs and everything. So yes, uh, it's a lot of fun driving the go-karts, but compared to that, when we go to the Formula 4 cars and the Formula LGV cars, uh, there's a lot of understeer and oversteer that we really have to balance um, between, you know, with, like we have to really select if we are o okay with going with understeer or oversteer. It depends on the, uh, you know, track that we are driving on. And um, I would always prefer, you know, uh, oversteer most of the time because um, I don't know, somehow I've just been like really comfortable having that, uh, you know, oversteer when I'm driving. And uh, compared to that, the Formula 4 cars that I have been driving, the Southeast Asia ones and the Formula cars, the JK Euro series that I drove, uh, in that, I think uh, understeer has, you know, really helped me at some point of time. Uh, so yeah, it, it depends on like, you know, what power, like how much faster the cars are and what track you're driving on. Uh, so yeah, it, it's quite, different driving styles with that we have to adapt uh, every time so when i used to drive for both formula cars and the go-karts it was uh very difficult because i got used to the formula car driving style and when i'm go on the uh you know driving on the go-karts i'm you know my rear is sliding off somewhere i'm going off somewhere so it's quite difficult uh, but yeah that's the racers you know that we really have to learn how to balance that Right. Yeah. Um, understeer and oversteer, definitely terms that we always hear in racing. And uh, 
Yeah, it's really interesting. What, what you know, I've, I've heard predominantly drivers do prefer oversteer because it kind of gives you more agility. And people always say uh, oversteer is a lot of fun for drivers, but it's scary for passengers. And then if you flip it the other way, <laughs> understeer is is okay for passengers, but it's really scary for the driver because you yes. really can control. You know, the car is just not turning. Uh, so yeah. yeah, that's that sounds great. And of course, it also depends on the track, right? Um, for example, uh, apart from the Indian tracks, what sort of tracks did you drive on for the Southeast Asia Championship? I would assume Sepang. I but, have, uh, yeah, just just that one. Uh, I have, okay. you know, in the Formula cars, I've just draw, you know, raced on Sepang, and uh, I love that track as well. It's it's quite interesting. Uh, there are a lot of corners that I really love. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean. You know, as I said, it's one of the technical tracks as well. Uh, I like, you know, hardly managed to, lo- you know, learn and get better at it after like driving for two years over there. Uh, so yeah, it's quite difficult. But it, once you know the track like really well, once you know everything about it and you're comfortable driving on it, you'll have a lot of fun. Like there are a lot of uh, uh, overtaking opportunities on that track particular corner i can think of or sequence of corners uh between sector two and three you have a double right hander yeah yeah like yes, a, it's almost yes, like a yes. obtuse you know hexagon yeah, shape sort yeah, of thing yeah yeah, yeah uh yeah it's pretty pretty pre- it's it's one of my favorites as well on the f1 calendar um definitely a tire killer that track a lot of uh high energy corners once again uh but what what would you prefer an understeering or oversteering car in a track like that um, I would prefer uh, oversteer anytime when I'm driving, you know, uh, on that track because it just gives me that little bit of confidence of, because it's a fast track, obviously. So, yeah. Cool, cool. And uh, one more thing regarding, uh, uh, we'll still stick to the technical stuff just for one last question. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you work with your engineers to set up the vehicle or is it kind of you focus more on the driving and like, do you, do, you, do you involve yourself in the setup work and how do you give feedback to the engineers? Uh, for me, uh, in the LGBs, there's not much setup that we can do. It's all about the handling part and that we can really change according to our driving styles. Uh, so with that, obviously, you know, we have like few practice sessions that we go through and we try. And every time I go on the tracks uh, with the LGB cars, uh, you know, the temperature really plays a role uh, so la- if i like you know the setup that is for my last round if i come back for the next round maybe after a few weeks i'll have to totally change that setup because the temperature and you know atmosphere is totally different and i'm struggling out there so with that uh, i am really lucky that you know i have a set of mechanics who i have known for years they have known my driving style they have known how i drive and what all things i need to change while I'm driving. So yeah, uh, we really communicate on that part, but the engine and everything else, I just let it, you know, like give all that stuff to them. Uh, and I would just try to focus on my driving. Yeah, I, I guess I, I've heard as well. Uh, I've had the chance to look at the Formula LGB cars a little earlier this year. Um, yeah, uh, I spoke to some of the teams that were testing there. They, they play around a lot with tire pressures, correct? Uh, I, I know that there are some other aspects that they really can't uh, change much on the car. Um, I anyway, know that's really interesting to hear. Uh, it's a quick interjection to our viewers, you know, feel free to type in questions uh, in the chat because in another 10, 15 minutes, we will be concluding our session uh, from our side and we'll we'll have a chance to, you know, go through some of the questions that you have put through. Um, anyhow, let's uh, shift to, uh, let's shift away from technical. It was a really interesting, uh, really good uh, insight from. Sorry, how about now? You say that you're audible. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry for the technical. Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Ah, I thought it was my internet. Yeah, uh, I. <laughs> sorry. Anyways, uh, we apologize to everyone for the uh, technical glitches that we're having. Uh, yeah, like I was saying. Um, yeah, it was really interesting uh, regarding the Formula LGP cars, especially you know you look at uh, tire pressures and things like that. I've seen those cars. You know, they can't you know change much on those cars. So it's a really good training ground, of yeah. course, for drivers, like you said. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, just a quick introduction for uh, 
for the viewers, you know, we're we're almost done with the questions from our end. Just a couple more. Uh, so feel free to type in questions in the chat box, and we can try to go through as many as possible for around the last fifteen minutes of our session today. Uh, anyhow, let's get back to the topic. Let's shift away from technicals. That was really good insight from you on to you know the sort of things that a driver thinks about before a race and how they adapt to the race car. Uh, let's go through the W Series experience because that was a really prestigious opportunity you got last year to go to Austria. Austria, uh, be a part of a selection camp with uh, some of the best racers from around the world. Um, so obviously, uh, last year FIA brought out a new initiative to encourage more women to be involved in motorsport to you know completely shift it so that we can ultimately you know move to a gender neutral environment where it's just all about racing. Um, and of course, that was created uh, on the basis of a Formula Three spec car that series. Uh, so you had the opportunity to go there and take part in a selection process. So could you run us through some of the experiences that you had and give some details of the sort of activities and assessment that they did for you? Okay. Uh, so first of all, I would say I feel really lucky to you know go out there and meet like most of the best female racers all around the world. Uh, we were like 50 female uh, racers who were selected uh, for the selection program from the whole world, like from different countries. And, you know, like few of the female racers that I used to follow, I could meet them personally and, you know, race against them. Uh, so it was an amazing experience. I have no regrets that I couldn't make it to the, you know, W Series. But, you know, meeting them and trying to learn from them and getting their experience, it was worth it. Uh, now, getting on the other side, uh, it was not the Formula 3 cars that we actually got to drive, obviously. Uh, for the selection program, it was uh, the Porsche Cayman uh, na that we could we had to drive and another Ford uh, car that we had to drive. Uh, you know, in India, we don't have snow, right? We don't have ice. We just have rains. So that is also very rare uh, on the racetracks that we can actually go and drive. Uh, but over there... It was that I had to drive on snow, I had to drift on ice, and that was in the Porsche. And I was like, you know, I had no idea what to do because I have never had such kind of experience before. Uh, that was one of the most important uh, factors for the selection. But by the end of the selection, when we, we got done with the practice and, you know, when that there was the final selection round, uh, I did pretty well. I could actually learn how to drift on ice. And uh, that was one of the best experiences that I ever got. And uh, there was this one, uh, you know, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there was this one race that uh, it was, uh, I guess, race of the champions or something. And we had to like, so the, the track that we were driving on, there were two parts of the track. One was the inner part of the track and one was the outer part of the track. Uh, we had like two cars and we had to drive both on the inner and outer side uh, together. And I raced against Jamie uh, in that. And I was so happy that I actually, you know, com I could compete with her. And yeah, uh, that fact, those races that we actually did was a great uh, learning experience. Other than that, there was fitness, uh, you know, aspect as well uh, that we uh, they assisted us on. There was presentation, how we can talk to sponsors. There was teamwork that we had to, you know, go through. They gave us a lot of, you know, teamwork uh, assignments, I would say, that they made us do. Uh, other than that, I don't think, yeah, I think these are the most, you know, few of the things that they assessed us on. Uh, it sounds like really exciting. It's like motorsport camp. It's like a, it's like yes. a full okay. motorsport camp. And then you have this grand prize at the end if you're like in the top you know, bunch you yeah, get to go yeah. in that series. But nonetheless, even though you didn't get through, you really had a good experience. That's really great to hear. I mean, I drifting on ice, because, where would you get yeah, to do that? Yeah. I mean, compared to the other females who actually, uh, you know, on the, on the in their countries, they could actually have that experience and they were like really good at it. Compared to them, if I, I come from India where there's no snow on the racetracks or ice on the racetracks, I could actually go out there and compete with them. I am pretty satisfied with myself. But obviously, you know, that's not the goal. Uh, my target for this year was to get into Formula uh, W Series again. But unfortunately, they couldn't uh, do this, you know, the racing championship this year. And it's the same females that they'll be driving next year. So now it's shifted to 2022 that I'll be, you know, trying for W Series. So hopefully I can get there soon. 
good luck you left leg get through i mean now now that you've crossed that first hurdle Absolutely. you know you've gone through the yeah. camp so you know what you need to do for next year uh, next course, next year uh so yeah uh, interesting you talked about an experience that you didn't actually get to do in real life and then you got to do it over there also really cool that you got to do that race of champions uh, you know that sort of uh, layout you know where it's a loop track that the outer loop yeah. joins the inner loop as really cool uh, so these are experiences that obviously if they're not available in india right now we have something called e sports electronic sports it's picking up yeah. it's been picking up in obviously a lot of gaming sectors like fps and uh, you know football and stuff and now it's kind of transitioned into simulation racing and uh, you know that's actually kind of made it made motorsport more popular accessible and relatively affordable to many more people who might not have that opportunity to actually go on track uh, how how important do you think this is to continue to inspire uh, the youngsters to get involved in not just driving but technical aspects and are you involved in such activities as well uh i mean i am not i would say that you know i was not so good at you know esports uh but yeah obviously as a racer i need to drive on the simulator quite a lot uh, and during this lockdown that was the only way that we could practice and uh, obviously i didn't go and compete online because i have had so many things that i had to prepare and work on other than just driving on the simulator but i would say esport is one of the next things that's you know going to break the world and you know like uh we'll get a lot of opportunities for youngsters uh if they don't have that budget you know to get into professional racing esports is the next thing uh you have seen so many drivers i have seen so many drivers you know coming out of esports as well so uh in that well in that sense um you know we have had a lot of championship in just like few months there are three main uh, esports championships uh, going on that is ir esports iron racing and ultimate e um, so i think uh, you know india is growing in that part for sure there are a lot of opportunities for young race you know upcoming uh, uh, you know passionate racers or you know passionate people who are really in, you know inclined towards motorsports they can actually take a part take up esports as well so yeah that is really good yeah absolutely i mean definitely it still does in, involve an investment and obviously for our viewers you know if you guys also interested in esports basically what you need to do you know there are different uh, esport games uh, we won't mention it now on stream but you can always google it there are some top tier okay. games that games and simulation you know platforms that can be used so generally what you just need to do is have a reasonably high end system get a, a steering wheel and a pedal input um and you're good to go it's just about practicing from there and obviously as things go on you can invest in a you know in, a, in racing yeah. gear you know get in the mood a helmet you know suggest, chair i would suggest i would suggest you know it's much more cheaper than actually getting into racing so yeah that yeah. is like the next best option for that definitely we, we've seen things like the gt driver academy that's been taking people yes. through gran turismo as an example so a lot of opportunities of course uh, for you viewers who want to try your hand at racing if you don't want to really invest in physical racing to start with um so let's just go through a few more things uh, let's go through your highest and lowest points in your career now motorsport is a domain that's filled with passion and emotions uh, what are some of the key lessons you can take from the experiences thus far um what is your most cherished memory in your career till date and what is probably the one uh, let's say negative experience that you still remember as a learning experience for for your future i would say every race that i actually didn't win uh has you know something that has you know made me learn something every race we can learn uh, from it uh, for me the lowest point uh have been twice uh when i shifted to formula cars in 2014 uh you know it was quite difficult change so i wasn't performing that well in karting as well and at the same time i wasn't performing that well in formula cars because i was trying to learn uh at that point of time i actually you know got really confused of what i need to do and how i need to do things uh but i would say that you know believing in yourself was something that really helped me uh i saw how i have performed you know in the last few years when i started karting i actually beat few of the competitors that i you know once looked up to 
and um, that was something that really helped me get out of that phase and the next time that i got into that phase was um, you know when i got into the jk euro series few races the first few races i was really doing well i had a great car but uh, later on i started having issues with my car i had like once i had to drive with two cylinders instead of three cylinders and i couldn't change my gears i was last i had misfiring in my car there were so many issues and i just couldn't perform i was last in most of the races and uh, you know not getting that performance was something um, that really made me doubt myself but at the same time you know i told myself that just give yourself some time to evolve and learn and improve your driving skills so when you have that perfect car you can implement both the things together and get the results so that is how i deal with my uh, you know low points and the good points that i have had are a lot of them um when i actually won my first ever race starting from last then when i won the rookie championship in formula cars after a lot of fighting that we did throughout the year um after that uh, you know when i actually became india's first ever female to race in the jk euro series and last year obviously when i got an international podium in the females category in formula 4 these are the few good you know moments of my life that i feel has given me a lot of confidence in myself and made me believe that this is something that i want to continue even in future even if i don't get the best results i just want to follow my passion into uh, you know racing even if i don't get to drive the cars that i really want to drive as long as i'm racing cars um, i'll be happy with it absolutely i like the fact that you talked about passion and there's just so many aspects to racing you know you have the driving and people who are interested in the cars you know they get the development of cars people who are interested in the race strategy race engineering there's just so many domains and the one thing that keeps people going is passion you see so many teams that have been struggling in higher end series in motorsport but people just keep going every year yeah. it's not because it's not because they're they're you know it's it's not just something that they do for a living it's it's passion yeah. it's it's what it's drives passion. them it's, it drives their entire life it's not just for the cash Very um true. yeah so just a reminder to our viewers again you know do feel free to post in more questions we're almost done with the session um let's talk about what you're aiming for in the future you, like you said you know you're 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 aiming to get into w series um in 2022 and uh, i read that you did take part in the rajasthan rally as a co driver i believe i i, I read somewhere yes, were you involved in rally yes. yeah yeah uh, for i guess one year uh, i just went there with you know we took part in the um, rallies uh, with my uncle and with my dad so i was the co driver because obviously i didn't have my race uh, you know even uh, you know car license actually because i was underage uh, so i had to become the co driver and navigate so that is something that was a lot of fun but i would not you know want to go into that field like fully but you know simultaneously just do few rallies or you know let's see i mean i'm open to that as well but uh, other than that uh, for my future plans this year actually i was supposed to race internationally i had a lot of talks going on with teams in uh, usa and uh, we had almost confirmed things but then the lockdown came and everything was put on hold so hopefully next year um, i'll be driving the formula 4 cars over there and doing a few testings in formula 3 uh, and let's see i mean uh, in the next 5 years at least i I'm really sorry. I didn't catch that last bit. I think the audio uh, sorry, kind of went out audio. of sync. Just a sec. Uh, I think that's my audio. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. Yep. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're talking about the, the next, the the next five years. What you're planning to, what your plan is, action plan okay. for five years. Yeah, so the actual plan for five next five years is just you know get into Formula Three as soon as possible. But obviously, as I said, uh, I don't want to push and you know uh, just like really 
uh, shift into Formula Three. I'm gonna take my time, do some testings, and you know, do some practice sessions internationally. But I think uh, at the same time, I still want to continue racing in India, be it the LGBs or be it whatever next category that comes up in India. Uh, so yeah, that is the next plan for now. Uh, have you considered uh, GT cars? We know that uh, I'm today the, the greatest race in in the world is going to happen in another yeah. 15 minutes. The Le Mans series filled with GT cars, people who have gone through you know closed wheel racing, few open wheel drivers as well. What are your opinions on that? Is that something you'd like to do in the future? I would be totally open to it. Uh, I'm, I actually have, you know, been in talks with my team has been in talks with few, uh, you know, teams as well for GT racing. So if I get that opportunity, I would surely be up because if we see Formula cars is not something that you can really, you know, it's it's a very narrow path. Uh, there's a lot of competition. There's, you know, not. A lot of chances that you can, you know, be up there. Uh, I obviously I would really want to work hard and get there, but if you know I have financial issues in some point of time, I would be totally open to going and driving in the GTCs as well. So yeah, I'm open to it. Definitely looking looking forward to you know a really rich and you know multicolored career for you in the future. Um, we just you. we just have one question I believe from our uh, viewers. Uh, is there any startup going on for motorsport related uh, activities in India and for race engineering and how can I join a team as a race engineer for my career? Uh, so I, I, it's very difficult in India for sure uh, to get into that part. But, uh, you know, obviously there are a lot of uh, Formula car racing teams that are, you know, in India, mostly in South India. You can contact them. You can at least start as an intern over there. Uh, I have in my team that I am racing in. We have few interns just trying to learn. Uh, so that is also there. Uh, you know, even the uh, saloon, even the normal cars uh, that the racing that happens in there. Uh, you get opportunities for interns, and then it's all up to you know how you manage yourself and how good contacts you make over there. And, you know, uh, everything just matters when you have the co right contacts and the right information to get into that team as a race engineer. Definitely. I'd also like to add to that. Um, so that's kind of the reason we we obviously we're hosting these uh, Explorica, this Explorica series and we'll be doing it uh, in the future as well. Just tune in every week. We have these episodes. This is inspire you viewers, you know, get involved. They're trying to tell you that it's not really that difficult. It might seem like a very obscured field, but it's actually not that difficult. You just got to go and get yourself involved. So you have, you know, different yeah. racing series. You have the Volkswagen series. You have MRF racing going on. Um, okay. And then as Mira had said, you know, you also have uh, touring car championships. You have the junior touring car championships. All of these things go on. And also if you're interested in, you know, motorbikes, there's a lot of motorcycle racing also taking place yeah. right now there are multiple you know if you just google the number of teams that are actually there especially based around south india there are a lot so it's just about you know shooting a mail getting involved and for all of you viewers who are still you know either studying in engineering or, or part of universities um formula student is always there you have baha you have electric teams they are teams that hone your skills and i can tell you personally i did enjoy four years in formula student in my undergrad and one year during my postgrad and it was a great experience it's something that you'll never you're never going to get something like that that sort of an experience anywhere else sure. so if you're interested in engineering that's one way and of course if you're interested in driving you have e race you have e sports if you're able to invest a little money jump in a go kart start practicing it is i can i can vouch for it it is a lot of fun to play uh, you know, drive around with go-karts, excellent proving ground. Um, are there any more? Yeah, one more, same question. Will we ever see F1 races again on BIC? Hopefully, I mean, let's see. There are, for sure not in the coming future. Uh, there are so many more race tracks, you know, F1 has uh, come up with how uh, to race. But we, you know, there are no about getting back to India because, you know, at the same time, there are so many issues just getting into India, be it financially as well. And uh, the track as well, uh, you know, hasn't been in the best conditions. Uh, so even we struggle at some point of time in Formula Cars. So, you know, getting back uh, to Formula Car Formula One in India, the track has to be like totally renovated and everything has to be done again. Um, but 
you know we can always keep our hopes high that some day in future we can get back for, get formula 1 back to india definitely i think uh, maintaining a race track is probably the building so, it of course takes a lot of money maintaining it the running costs are high no wonder grand prix generally cost a lot of money in terms of ticket prices uh, but anyhow yeah let's keep our fingers crossed we have one grade one fi circuit in india let's hope we get now uh, well, let's hope we see really fast cars on it but till then you know we can definitely watch mira driving there he will be rocking it in the next <laughs> you know year uh, let's just hope you know the lockdown situation as it eases we're going to see start seeing a lot of races coming up soon 